Aloha, everyone. Joshua Hayes at BigWaveTrading.com. It was another churn session, basically, for the market. And I tell you what, we'll just pull up a five-minute chart. I'm going to remove the after hours here. And I just want to show you for the second day in a row, that's a pretty gnarly sell-off into the close yesterday. It's a pretty gnarly sell-off again today into the close. It's more pronounced than the IWM. You can see the IWM is actually hitting new lows and the SPY. But once again, ugly close, ugly close. And what I want to remind everybody is that short term, things are very, very weird and bifurcated right now. The only index that continues to look good to me is the QQQ. Longer term time frames on every index is negative, but the QQQ doesn't look that bad at all in relation to how the SPY, IWM, and DIA look on a monthly and on a weekly. You can see, once again, just by looking at the indicators, the TSV and PPO, DIA, SPY, IWM, nothing's bullish there yet, but the QQQ, PPO is crossed. PPO histograms above zero. So it's kind of interesting. The daily still looks pretty good. TSV is solid. PPO is still above the zero line, still trending higher. <clears throat> Excuse me, everyone. Sorry about that. Don't know where the volume is, but the volume is not there. SPY, you know, holding up. Histogram is going the wrong way. You can see that the TTM uh, trend momentum is moving lower. But overall, you know, there's only one index that's sticking out to me, and that's the QQQ. That being said, intraday price action continues to be very weak up around these levels. We'll see what happens. The good news is, is that, hey, at least we're not just V ramping higher every day. We basically are on the QQQ. But we do have some consolidation. So we'll see how that resolves. But for now, following the index, so this is what it looks like to me. Now let's dive into the individual charts to show you what, what I'm seeing and why I just can't embrace this current short-term bounce off the March lows. Like I said, to me, it's a bear market bounce until it's proven not. Even if we V-ramp, and the only way to, to completely eliminate that would be for us to V-ramp to actual new all-time highs. And then, guys, I'm going to remind you, every time that we've done that, we pull back in a very harsh and extreme manner. So if we, in fact, do happen to do that on the QQQ, I'm pretty sure, based on historical precedents, that it's not going to turn out well. But anyway, let's look at the individual charts. All right, so before we move on to the individual stocks, is there good news from today's session with the pullback? Yeah, volume was lower on the SPY. On the QQQ, volume was lower. On the IWM, lower volume. DIA, lower volume. So that is good news, consolidating nicely. But here's the bad news. So first we'll start out with the stocks that look good. S and BR are stocks that's, you know, like this is what I like to see, okay? So this is a stock chart pattern that I'm kind of liking right now. I like that it's consolidating. AXSM, I can see a big cup or saucer pattern and a handle forming right here. I, I like the way it's forming. There's no signal there, but I like the way it looks. Then, <laughs> this one, LLIT. It's just funny. I, you know, I don't know why, like on a session like today, we get the huge, the above average volume. And on the actual signal, we don't get the volume. So technically, what you're seeing today, volume-wise, I would have loved to have seen on this session with the near high day close. Like I told all members yesterday, this stock has been flagged as a potential new long position. But without it making two of my BOP scans, it did not make the Max Green BOP 5 scan. scan. And without the above average volume, I can't, you know, in good conscience take it. But, of course, it works today. But bottom line is, I like this chart pattern. I like SNGX. I like the way it's consolidating. IBIO is a stock you can see here. The long signal was here. Entered here. Gapped up. Took all of my profits this day. And I tell you what, working with interactive brokers um, was not an issue then. This is just me being completely, um, I don't know, man. I, I don't, my trading has been really bad lately on an end-to-day basis, but uh, it's, you know, it's a byproduct of the market. But anyway, 690% gain in one, two, three days after the signal. So, some members were able to hold on to that entire piece where I took all my profits this morning. So congratulations, to everybody. But look at this chart overall. Beautiful, beautiful rounding out saucer pattern. So here's another chart that I like. Um, PEC, I like the way it looks off the 200-day moving average. There is no volume. There is no signal. CMT, here's one that's basing sideways. CODX, another one. Love this one. Um, 
really you know considered as long here but we go and we look it is technically at the 20-day moving average didn't close near the highs now it's extended from the 20-day simple moving average so there is no signal but just like ibio codx i really like what i'm seeing here the way these charts look kind of tells us you know think about it and here's vxrt do you think that the covid19 coronavirus situation is over these charts don't say that so just keep that in mind and then USCG. And besides that, then there's a couple, there's a few hedges in here that I like the way they look off the lows. FAS, DRV, and SDAO. So what I wanted to really point out there is that you got some hedges in there or some, you know, inverse leverage ETFs on the bear side is what I should have said. But all the stocks that I just showed you, look at the price levels of them all. They're all very speculative junk names. The only name of any quality out there was SNBR. And how can you trust a chart pattern like this whenever we're getting a lot of this kind of action from the stocks that were looking good? So I want to remind everybody, NCLH was getting a lot of messages telling me, look at the volume. That looks like a bottom, right? Well, look at the volume on the reversal. This is what I continued to warn about. AUB looks like it's bottoming. Look at all that volume. Bam, the reversal. Huge volume today. Cats. Here's one that went right here. I'm interested in cats. I'm looking for an entry in cats, but instead it just keeps V ramping higher. So what do you do? Buy it as it breaks out to a new, fresh new 52-week high. It works for a little bit. And now look at the reversal and the volume on the reversal. This is what I keep warning about. And we're going to look at some more. BG, look at the reversal. Look at the volume. It, it, it just it, it trumps anything on the upside. Silk. You're an idiot for not buying it off the lows, right? Well, where's my entry? Where's any sign that that selling was capitulatory? And then, bam, we go here. It's just like SPY. Listen, if volume would have been huge here off the lows, right here with that retest, as soon as we gap up above here, yeah, I'm into it. I'll start looking for great patterns. But not only is there great patterns out there, there was no capitulation, no retest. All of this is problematic. This is why you see the silk reversal. INGN. Look at that volume on the reversal. Perry today, look at the volume on the reversal. So you're starting to get a trend. GBGS, another one that looked like it was bottoming out. Look at Disney. Everybody was Disney. Look at the huge volume on the downside. No volume on the bounce, but still potential for a bottom, right? Look at the reversal and the volume today. Just It's just very, very, very um, ugly out there. NLS, here's another example. What? You chase it up here. You're certain that, oh, it's just going to keep V-ramping. Now you got the heavier volume reversal. And here was a nice pattern. Ted Yu, first off, can't trust any Chinese stocks anymore. They all seem to be frauds now, even the best ones. But I was telling everybody, nice pattern. Really like this one. But look at the price level. This stock is making a lot of money, right? Excellent earnings, excellent sales. Why is it only a $5 stock? That's telling you something. And then Look at our reversal now. So the bottom line is, there's too many of these kind of stocks out there. And as long as these stocks are out there, I'm going to continue to be cautious. If we keep V-ramping, yeah, it's not for my methodology. I've told you guys before, when the weekly and monthly time segment volume lines are negative on all of the indices, when the VIX is above 30, when I don't get hot chart patterns, first off, it's going to be hard to take any signal with any confidence, but to load up the boat, it's going to be impossible. And that means we're going to miss plays. I mean, there, there were other stocks here. I just realized I didn't even show these. Look at MCY. Look at that reversal. LEG. Look at the volume and the reversal. ONDK. Uh, BCO. Here's one that everybody was telling me to um, get long. Not ATAX. Just want to show you this one. But STNG. Everybody was frothing over this one. Everybody was loving STNG after this move. Everybody's telling me how you got to be long STNG. Well, look at the reversal and look at the volume. So it's very problematic. Now, on the flip side of all of that, how many long signals have I issued that I've either been forced to take profits on too early due to my own personal incompetence, interactive brokers' incompetence, or just not taking the signal? I want to show you guys something. CTSO. This was CTSO signal right here. This was it. Right there. I didn't take it. Why didn't I take it that day? It's extended from all the moving averages. In a strong market, like I said, one trillion times since the signal date, this is a name I take as a long. Never take it. CTSO, since that signal, is now up 71% in a month, less than a month and a half. So it's unbelievable. RTTR, you can see when I get long. First signal was back here. Never let, allowed me to enter 
when it took out that high two days later. Got long RTTR, took some profits here, sold all of it out this morning thanks to interactive brokers issues. RTTR, whoops, sorry. That is now a gain at the highs of 128% in less than a month. Another missed opportunity due to problems. SXTC, this one that was flagged as a long position this day. I don't take it because of all the overhead resistance, but sure enough, two days later, it's up 15%. I'm not in it. IBIO, already went over this one. This is due to my incompetence. Should still have a piece of this position, even though it hasn't been doing anything. LLIT, already explained to you why I missed this one. Here's another miss, Vapo, right here. The stock gets flagged as a new long position, right there. Why do I pass on it? Well, it's extended from the 20-day simple moving average, problem one. Problem two, even though BOP increased from the level before, I saw that overall it was trending down, decided to pass on it. Of course, with all the wicks in this chart, you know, you, you, I guess it pays to chase sometimes, right? So the gain from that miss, 68%, so unbelievable. Another miss. And then there's Mark. Mark, first off, where you see the arrow is not was not the entry date. This is the signal date with Mark. If you remember with the RTTR, how I got out of it too early. I didn't take Mark because of the interactive brokers issues. But once again, notice all the open bodies. Notice all the candles and the wicks in the chart. Mark triggered it would have triggered and filled this day. Members did get long, Mark. And look at it now. Unbelievable. Another miss. And this pretty much sums up my trading right now. 160% gain in less than a month. Missed out on because I cannot carry my limit orders and stop orders the way that I could before the month of March. Interactive brokers. That's on me. You should just use stops. You should just take profits along the way when I see them intraday. But that's the other problem. I live on Maui. And by living on Maui, I have a very a horrible time zone. The market opens at 3.30 a.m. right now. No matter what I do, it's almost impossible to stay awake during the entire intraday session. I guess I should just start sucking down coffee. But even then, what makes it even more difficult is my end-of-day process. It takes a, takes a lot of time after the close. And it's hard to do both. So one or the other has got to go. But the bottom line is, it's a weird market out there. Um, and if you notice with all those winning stocks we just went over or the missed stocks that I've missed, that we went over and all the initial charts, they're all speculative crap. All the big cap ones were all those ugly reversals. You know, that tells me a lot without <laughs> saying much. I even though I continuously blah, 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 blah. but anyway, so that it is what it is. Now, platinum members, there is one new speculative long position for tomorrow's session. It was in three separate scans, including my perfect speculator scan. So it is quality, but once again, it's one of those V-shaped kind of extended names. But fortunately, it isn't that extended. So if you're a Platinum member, please go check that section. You'll get the good to cancel buy stop level, the good to cancel buy limit level, the game plan, and then the stops and the game plan if we get into it on that watch list page. So are there any end-of-day sell signals to go over on the sell side? Yeah, we had two end-of-day sell signals we'll review for you, ATKR is closing below the 20-day simple moving average. I don't care that it's on above average volume. It's taken away most of the gains. Now, if everybody knows, I'm super tight with my trailing profit stops now. So as each day it went up, I would split my, my shares up and add a stop below each level. So I've already been knocked out of most of this name anyway. But on an end-of-day basis, 0.5% gain. Once again, it's because it's closing below the 20-day simple moving average without really doing anything percent gain-wise since the signal. And then UGAZ, um, very lucky, already hit a 50% profit target following the new long signal. Hit it right here yesterday, so out of 50% of it. Had a profit stop below this level. That was taken out this morning, but following today's session, another stock that's immediately closing below its 20-day simple moving average before producing any real gains. So UGAZ is a 50% end-of-day sell signal there. That's a negative 4%. Always round up the losses, always round down the wins. Negative 4% loss on an end-of-day basis. So that's all the end-of-day stuff. Now, what I want to show is that even though I live on Maui, whenever I wake up early in the morning, I am looking at winning stocks. I'm looking at the stocks in play. I'm alerting them. Not only that, we have a, a trader in the room who's turning into an amazing day trader, and he's only recently started to do it. And I'm going to go ahead and call him out. Brahmable, congratulations, brother. Your trading is really stellar right now. 
Um, so before we wrap this video, I want to show you two stocks that were in play today. He traded them both. We alerted them both. And I just want to show you the power of focusing intraday now on the right stocks versus trying to trade this market on an end of day swing trade basis with all the overnight risk. All right, so this is my single stock window that I use whenever I'm day trading. And before the open, I start populating this watch list right here. Now, normally the stocks that are up here, the top percent gainers, most of these find their way down here as long as they're liquid. But in the pre-market, some stocks start showing up, start putting them in the list. And as the market opens, some stocks push off the opening bell like IZEA with huge volume. That's what I really want everybody to look at over here is this is volume on the push. Do you notice the steady, consistent volume on the way up? That puts IZEA at the top of my watch list. And as you can see, it was added. Today was actually a bigger list than normal. Uh, 13 total stocks to I was watching in the morning on this list. But IE, where is that? IZEA was the top one. And unfortunately, this one didn't work that great today, but still, you got a good setup. This is just a one-minute chart. I use other charts. I use the three-minute in conjunction with the two-minute, five-minute to see where it's at in re regarding to all of its moving averages. Initially, at the open, I have the pre-market data on. I only remove that once we get going. So with IZEA, one of the things I liked the most about it was that push on initial volume. But you will see here, here, you will see here, it take out those May 4th highs on that strong volume. I was hoping IZEA would pull back to that 4850 support level. It never did, but even then, you've got a nice setup here. You got a squeeze, you come out of the squeeze. Granted, you didn't get much out of it, but even if you got it up here to the highs, you still got a nearly 20% move. If you got it off VWAP, where we were alerting it intraday in the chat room, you got a 30% move. But IZEA was one of those intraday winners. Now, the main one I want to go over is MGNX. This one was unbelievable. So this one was actually, because I was doing something else, brought to my attention by Bramable. Remember how we always talk about how we love stocks at halt? So after this first halt, I'm not interested in this. This volume right here does not interest me whenever MGNX halts. Even though there is news, blah, 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 um, catalyst, which is always interesting to me, I believe, I, I can't even remember what this was. I believe a tweet might have started this. But either way, that doesn't matter with this one. What's most important with this one is that you have a halt, but then after the halt opens, this thing just steadily climbs on extremely strong volume. Look at my indicators. This is just a one minute. On a three minute, look at the volume. Look at my indicators. I mean, this is across multiple time frames. This is a big deal to me. So it's very, very on watch now with that volume. Now it goes into a second halt. This puts the MGNX at the top of the list, comes out of the halt, and it tried to break out here, but it didn't work out. Still, that being said, it looks like it failed here, right? It looks like MGNX is done. But if MGNX can retake the VWAP on strong volume, it's back in play. And that's exactly what happens here. Now, I'm gone now. My morning is done. I'm back to bed on Maui due to the limited hours of sleep. So I'm not watching it. But guess who was watching it like he was supposed to intraday? You know who. Congratulations, Brahma. And right here, amazing move. You already have multiple pocket pivot point signals within this consolidation. You're already in multiple squeezes. The TSV 130 is trending higher. PPO is holding up. Balance of power looks good. And that's the same case on this three-minute chart, on this two-minute chart. So you have multiple time frame. Oh, look at this two-minute chart. I mean, that's beautiful. This is beautiful. Wasn't around for it. But there's MGNX. And what happens? You know what happens. Unbelievable into that halt. So if you got long around that $15 level, and if you were able to, you scale out obviously on the way up. You're never going to hold the whole thing the whole way up. And if you get long here at the 15 level, you've got a size to where you give yourself to the, at least on some of it, the VWAP. I mean, you can cut your losses earlier uh, um, on any support break, but you've got to at least also position size to where you give yourself to the VWAP to let this thing work. But the bottom line is this thing goes almost to 30 and makes an intraday gain of 80%. It was alerted in our chat room ahead of time. 
we always focus on the right stocks intraday, but you got to stalk them all day because you never know when they're going to move. And unfortunately, I'm not able to be around all day. But some of the other ones that we're watching, XRF out the gate, that had an initial morning move. Nothing came out of it. There's cars, and you can even see me. I drew this triangle on it. And if I would have loved to have seen it come to the, it actually did touch the initial morning high and bounce off of it. But here's another one that worked out beautifully out of a, Basically, I call that a flag, but it's technically a triangle above the initial morning high. It's like a bull flag to me, um, bullish descending triangle. And there's another 20% move. That one was beautiful intraday. And you can see I circled that it was in a squeeze. The only thing is that on a three-minute, there was no squeeze. On a two-minute, there was no squeeze. But once again, those indicators look great. But cars was another beautiful setup. Then once again, I wasn't around for. I, I, I started to draw this triangle before I left. So I left at the early stages, and, I, and then I ended up seeing it move without me. But I, bottom line, pretty impressive. LPSN, um, this was on the watch early in the morning. You can see this made a 15% move. That was a higher price name. AZS, nothing happened. You can see nothing happened with these. But there's TGTX again. This one was on watch following yesterday, held huh, those highs. Another slow mover, but it worked out. So, you know, it's an interesting market. But whenever I see moves like IZEA in the morning, um, why do I just fly through those? MGNX, middle of the day, cars, middle of the day. And I think about how difficult it is on an end of day basis. Bottom line is if you can day trade, you got a day trade right now. All right, going to wrap the video lesson up. It is long. Aloha.